Hi guys, this is Pradeep. So today we will talk about another interview question related to COPA. And this question recently asked uh, in interview to one of our participants. The question was, what is KU-U5? So this question you can see it is it is asked in a different way. That means uh, interviewer here it is asking from the business point of view. Normally they used to ask like what is COPA, all these things. But exactly this particular question is related to COPA assessment. So instead of COPA assessment, directly the interviewer is asking that what is KUA U5. So this one uh, I will explain with a practical scenario. So that will be easy for you. So COPA assessment means whenever we are going to do the month end allocations. So one is assessment, maybe you are familiar with is your cost center assessment. So cost center assessment means from the cost center, we are going to transfer the cost to different receivers. So it may be another cost center or maybe we can uh, transfer to another cost object. But COPA assessment means it is one of your flows of values. So initially we are going to record the cost. Let's say we, uh, let's take one practical example. So let's say we have one cost center and that cost center is let's say HR department. So this is my HR department. And in the beginning, we have recorded some cost with this cost center. So this cost are my primary cost elements. So here, let's say I will include salary. So let's say this is uh, 90. Then uh, I'm going to record here some office expenditure, office expenditure, or let's take some higher values. Let's say this is uh, uh, suppose 500 and office expenditure is 600. So initially, as and when the cost is recorded, this cost we are going to record with your normal GL account. I mean, uh, as for we don't have cost element, so that's why I'm using the term normal GL accounts with cost element category one. So GL with cost element category one, right? So we have recorded the cost. When, as and when the cost incurred, so we are going to record the cost. Now this 600 cost, so it may be INR, USD, anything you can take. So this 600 cost, we are going to record with our cost center as HR department. At this moment, we don't know to which profit segment we are going to transfer this cost or how many profit center we are going to transfer the cost, right? So we are going to transfer to the product, we will transfer to the profit center. So you can take here any example. So initial sender will be my cost center, then from this cost center, I'm going to transfer the cost to multiple receivers and this receivers, your wish, you can take anything. I'm going to take here a couple of products. So that means in, uh, we can take, uh, that means during month end, this cost we are going to transfer from this sender cost center because initially salary department HR, that's why we have recorded. Then in month end, we are going to transfer this cost to multiple receivers. In my example, some receivers I'm going to take here and these receivers are product. Like you can take in any of your characteristics or multiple characteristics. You can take here product, you can take here any order, you can take here profit center, anything you can take, your wish, you are free to take anything. So I'm taking here some products. So you can take also a customer, you can take also product group. So under one particular product group, multiple products are there and uh, you are going to transfer to multiple materials. So basically for the cost and analysis point of view, so this cost, as it is not part of my cost of production or cost of sales, so later we are going to transfer this cost to multiple receivers. So let's say here I'm going to transfer 50% of cost. This is one product. Let's say this is my FG. Here I'm going to transfer, let's say 20% uh, of cost. And here I'm going to transfer 30% cost. So after this allocation, this initial value, whatever we have recorded here, so this will be zero because there will be minus 600 will be there, right? And all the respective values will be transferred to the cost. And this one is KU5 when interview asks. So basically it is your end user activities. So when a user is going to run the T code, which we will run today, uh, KU5 or let KU5. So when user is going to run the KU5 in a particular period, so automatically system is going to generate here the internal document. So with reference to this KU5 execution, system is going to generate the internal document. So let's say the document number is 100 or let's say 1000. With reference to which business transaction, it should be KSPA. If we'll compare this one with your cost center location, so cost center business transaction is RKIU. This one is KSPA. 
And in normal cost center assessment, we are using secondary cost element. Here also we will use secondary cost element. So that means in the COPA report, the primary cost elements will not be there. Rather, you are going to have your secondary cost elements. And your wish, anything you can take. Let's say here I am going to take this one as our admin cost. So in COPA report, you will find in different profitability segment, you will find admin cost, which will be transferred. So this is the concept of your KU-U5 or COPA assessment. So to see this one practically, let's go into the SAP system and there we will post this cost and then after that I will execute and we will do a reconciliation because in S4, we know that whenever we are going to have this document, so you are going to also have one finance document too. So we are going to have a FI document that also we are going to check and everything will be part of your SC doc entire process we are going to see both from GL report and from the table point of view. So let's do it. So I'm going to log into S4 system. So right now I'm in S4 system, very easy process. Only thing is the question was a little bit confusing or it was asked in a confused way. Suddenly what is KU5? So if you are well versed with the different scenarios, maybe you can answer it properly. So let me post a document here. And let's say this salary was, or this cost was recorded on 1st of December. This date also I'm going to take this one and laser, let's take the leading ledger. And we are going to take here the respective GL account. So let me check here what GL account I can take here. So I will take here the GL account as let's take this one one four thousand and four zero one four. Four thousand and this one four thousand and this is as per my example five hundred and this one is four zero one four office expense four zero one four and let's take this one hundred and initially where I'm going to record initially I'm not taking any profitability segment initially I'm taking here the cost center and this cost center is HR department then your payment or outgoing payable outgoing so here I will take any credit account so let's take here randomly something enter document is balanced debit credit and post it Right now if you say take this document this document is like your normal cost object document where you will find certain cost objects are recorded in these two line items and it is your credit entry and as usual this will be your accounting document we got and CO document we got as cryptic document so you know the concept of cryptic document so document number one triple zero four and this document we got when I posted this cost okay so I got my FI document so this FI document I got here one triple zero four and what is the business transaction for this coin because it is recorded with your cost center right so let's verify this one so i will check this one in my cost center okay and uh, what is my cost center initially i recorded this cost with cost center h100 so i will record there sorry s triple zero three and this cost is recorded so here uh, it is in usd so don't get confused and uh, this cost is recorded this is the one triple zero four done so initially at the time of posting the cost user just selected you may hear configure okb9 okay, so that automatically pick this cost center cost recorded then in month end when the costing and this is the finance entry so now there is no update in the copa so in month end when user the particularly the profitability team they when they are going to do the internal allocations and all so there they will run the ku5 and that was the initial question so i'm going to enter here ku5 so what is this okay then you have to select and uh, this one is uh, earlier in ecc only it is available with your costing based copa so it was not there with account based copa but here in s4 it is available with your account based copa as well as i mean under margin analysis so here i have configured margin analysis so i will select my operating concern and it is set as margin analysis now we will see whether under this margin analysis it is going to work or not okay so specify your period so this is my ninth period april to march i am following the financial year select the cycle this is the cycle test run and execute so let's see in test run whether it is working or not. 
So process completed without any error. So sender is one and receiver three. So as I said, I have included here three different products as my receivers. So sender is one and receiver is three. And if you we'll check the segments, this is how it is. And where I'm going to record the cost? I'm going to record my cost with 6009. So this is my secondary cost element, 6009. If you want to see for reference, this one, 6009. Right, so let's go for the final run. Remove test run and execute. So then this cost must be zero, means in, in cost center the cost should be zero and uh, we are going to transfer the cost to profitability report. So first let's see the cost center. Now it is zero and you can see three line entries are generated. Initially I have recorded the cost with my cost element as 4,4014 and these are my primary cost elements and 6009 my secondary cost element. When I checked this one, what was my source document? It was finance document, 1004 my finance document. When I'm checking this, this document, this is my allocation document or internal document, anything you can say, here I have my internal CO document. So now we will see with reference to this document number 1101, we will see the finance document, but before that, we will see the GL account 6009 first from the FI report. Six zero zero nine, and as usual, secondary cost element balance would be zero. But these are all this document number seven triple zero three. This seven triple zero three document is my reconciliation document. You can exactly see this. Uh, you have plus entries and minus entries. So wherever you will find the minus entry, that is your sender line. You can see here. Check this line. Let's close it. Check this line. Wherever you will find the minus entry, for example, this is a minus entry. What is the sender here? The sender is your cost center. And exactly the same amount you can see a plus entry. Similarly, 6.43, the minus entry means sender. That is your cost center. And receiver is your profitability segment 9. Right? So that also we will check now in the COPA report. So this is my source document. With reference to the source document, I got my finance document and exactly here also you are going to get the same information. Check, check one, for example, this one. So this is a minus entry. So what should be the center? The center should be the cost center. Check here, S2003. And if I will check my plus entry, 6.43, that is my receiver. So first we did, uh, we have checked in CO, internal document. Then we have checked in our finance document. This is your reconciliation document. So this document derived with reference to the document number uh, we will check that in the table also. So with reference to this document, document number 1101, this document is derived, right? And uh, last one, we will check the COPA too. Check the COPA line item, same should be there. So a couple of lines are there. Let me sort the with today's date. Right now you can see here uh, this is one receiver this is one receiver and these are your senders this is your reconciliation document finance but actually you can see all the minus entries are your here it is sender so corresponding plus entries which is there in this document it is available in the copa line item so 6.43 one receiver 2.57 one receiver 3.85 and what is the document number here? Document number 1101. Now let's check whether your receivers are updated or not or the required characteristics updated or not. So if I will check here so I can see my product is updated. So basically I wanted that I will transfer the cost to the product. But initially I have not recorded this cost with product. Initially I have recorded with a cost center. Then in month end allocation we performed this date. So it is created on but basically if you check the document posting date definitely must be your uh, finance document, I mean uh, the month and date. Let's check this document. So we got in total two document here. One document is the finance document when I posted this document 1004 and here this is 1st December and second document here this is my another finance document document number 7003. So this is my finance document and what is the posting date? 
although I executed today, but posting date is 31st December because it is month and activities, right? So this is the outcome of your KU U5 and this is your COPA assessment. Now, whatever data I have shown you, so the source is again the same, AC docket table. So let's check that. So I hope you got now, now you got the, what is the process of uh, COPA assessment or KU5. Now from the table point of view, let's check both the documents. So we will check that in the table, AC docket table, because that is our source. And here we will check two documents. One document is your one triple zero four one triple zero four and second document was reconciliation document which is seven triple zero three so our data is ready now let's extract this data in excel then it will be easy for us to analysis Now, if I will check my first document, that is document number. So if I will check my first document, that is document number 1004. So for 1004 document, you can see that is two cost objects or two business transaction coin is there and one is your payment entry, credit entry. And here, what is my cost center? The cost center initially where I've recorded the cost. Here, there is no update about profitability segment. It's the cost center I recorded here the cost center as uh, HR department. So while posting, I have recorded this cost as 2003. And this document I posted manually. So this document I posted here. So that is why the reference document is my finance document. So here it is a normal cost object posting and here cost object is cost center. But when user is a CO user, the COPA team, they, when they are doing the month and allocation, so that time and they perform this activity in, in CO, and that time we got this document 7003. So here all the business transaction, I said that it is KSPA. This is your COPA assessment. And here my source document is document number 1101, which is there in the COPA report too. This is my document number 1101. And with reference to this, I got my finance document. Right? And uh, this is everything, the both data. And in these line items, already we have checked that profitability segment characteristics are updated. So if you want to see, I can show you that I transfer the cost to material. So wherever you will find uh, the plus entries are there, not material, it is product. So all this cost transferred to these three different products. And definitely these are my uh, plus entries. The rest three line entries are sender minus entries. So if let me highlight this one here, you can see these are must be your product plus entries. So sender is your cost object cost center and uh, receivers are your product in my example. Okay, so the plus entries are there and the non highlighted one that is sender is cost center. So that is why it is minus entries. So always when you are preparing for interview and which one you are finding it is difficult. So always on the scenario based you prepare well. So in that way when you will answer the question in interview. So the answer will not be theoretical and second thing business I mean in interviewer will get the feeling that already you configured in the system. So that is why you can see that whenever I'm answering any questions or anything I'm explaining always I'm connecting that with the business scenarios. Right. So any question on this uh, reply I mean you can add in the comments or you can mail me. So very soon we will see with uh, another video. Thank you.